the hassle of getting rid of trailers or old farm equipment. Visit kpfa.org or call 877-411-3662 to make your life and your station a little bit better. Good evening. You're listening to KPFA or KPFB in Berkeley, KFCF 88.1 FM in Fresno and online at kpfa.org. The time is 9 p.m. Stay tuned for Suspense, followed by Mr. Joe Frank. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense. A weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio. Presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair. To keep you in suspense. the myriad life forms on earth none have held such a place of reverence in human culture as trees in Norse mythology it was the world tree Yggdrasil that supported all of creation a tree of life figured prominently in religions from Assyria to China Egypt to India even in Christianity and Judaism talking trees were a frequent source of wise counsel such as the Greek oak of Dodona and the Hindu tree of the Sun and the moon but not all tree spirits were friendly. Tales of trees inhabited by demons or jinn are part of many religions. Even today, there are entire forests reputed to be haunted and which are assiduously avoided. These beliefs touch on something very primal. If you've ever been lost in the woods as sunset approaches, the fear that grips you is akin to what our prehistoric ancestors would have felt. For at the core of each myth, is some kernel of truth. Will you hurry up, Loretta? Come on, the train leaves in five minutes. Do you have the tickets? Tickets? <laughs> Of course I have the tickets. Let's grab the bags and shake a leg. Last call for the 620 Keystone Express to New York City with stops in Trenton, Princeton Junction, and Newark. Let's go. We missed this one and we'll have to wait till 10 o'clock. All aboard. Hurry. Find an empty cabin. <sighs> Made it. Yeah, sure. We're home free now. Will you put a sock in it, Vi? Anyway, it's your fault we're in this fix. My fault? You were the one who was supposed to keep the guard distracted. How was I supposed to know he'd be more interested in grabbing a sandwich than chatting me up? Well, who could blame him? Just look at you. Your seams aren't even straight. Oh, and you're the height of fashion with that gaudy bag of yours? What's in that thing anyway? My mother always told me to carry a jar of cold cream in my purse, just in case some fella ever got fresh. Hmm. Well, that guard's not going to be getting fresh with anybody from now on. Do you really think we killed him? We? <laughs> we didn't kill anybody. You were the one who hit him with your purse. So, it would have been better to just let him call the cops on us? Can you see the headlines? Bank high thwarted. Gal tellers arrested for pulling inside job. Oh, that'd be just swell. Look, Vi, what's done is done. Now we gotta hightail it to Canada before they find the body and start putting two and two together. Yeah, but, Loretta, we're probably making too much out of it. I mean, no one saw us there except the guard, right? And he ain't talking. 
Maybe we got nothing to worry about. Do you want to stick around and find out? No. All right then. Look, we won't get to New York till almost ten, and then it's another twelve hours to Montreal. So we should try to get some rest, okay? Okay. We should sit side by side with our bags close to us, especially this one. We've gotten ourselves into a real pickle for this hundred grand, and I'm not about to lose it now. Right, Nevada. Now leaving Sarasota Springs. Next stop, Ticonderoga, New York. <laughs> Did you get a gander at the old bird who just got on? Dog under one arm, suitcase under the other, and books everywhere else. Yeah, what a character. Good thing this train's deserted, or else we'd have to worry about her setting up shop here. <laughs> Don't jinx us. Oh, too late. Oh, good heavens! <laughs> Please excuse the clutter, but I I left my hotel in such a hurry. You uh, be a dear and fetch my satchel, would you? Um, sure. And help me with these books. Of course. And give me the package of treaties in the outside pocket. What? Just do. This is Bobby. Say hello to the nice girls, Bobby. Now let's get ourselves properly introduced. Bobby, may I present? Why, I, I, I've forgotten your name. Uh, we haven't introduced ourselves yet. Well, is it any wonder I've forgotten? She's Lo Lois. I'm I'm Lois Smith, and this is my cousin Mary, uh, Mary Smith. Charm. I am Dorothy McIntyre, but you may call me Dottie. Everyone else does. I'll bet they do. Jeez, it. Pleased to meet you, Dottie. Why is there a little treaty for Bobby in your purse, dear? Not unless he likes cold cream. Jeez, it, Bobby. So, um, what brings you out on a train at this hour of night? You certainly do have a lot of books. Why, adventure, of course. Wayne and I. Wayne is my late husband. Used to love to travel around the globe. He was a professor of anthropology, and I'm carrying on his studies. Currently, I'm doing research into the folklore of pre-American Indian culture in this region. Pre-American Indian? Why, yes, dear. The Northeast is rife with legends that predate the Mohawk, Delaware, Cayuga, or any other tribe. Legends of eldritch creatures that prehistoric man both worshipped and feared. In fact, the very region we're entering now is said to be the lair of one of the most powerful of these entities, the Black Goat. A goat? They were afraid of a goat? Shh. Uh, you were saying about the Black Goat? Oh, it wasn't really a goat. That was just a name given to describe the indescribable, the black goat with a thousand young. The entity was also known as Shub Negrath, a fertility goddess extensively worshipped in prehistoric times. But it wasn't the black goat that man feared; it was her young. Her young? What about them? They were described as some nightmarish caricature of trees. With pitch black tentacles and gaping maws and stumpy hooved legs, seemingly unbound by any laws of nature, the dark young was said to have the stench of an open grave. And woe be to any poor unfortunate who fell into their slimy clutches. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Goodness, child, you're shaking like a leaf. Oh, oh I'm fine. It's just. Oh. She's just been a bit ill, all.、Uh, perhaps we should go grab a bite to eat in the dining car. 
Yeah. I probably just need to eat, that's all. Can we get you anything, Dottie? Oh, no, no, no. Go on, girl. Bobby and I have brought our own treaty. Haven't we, Bobby? Haven't we, baby? Hmm. All right. Um, we'll be back in a few minutes, Dottie. Can you believe that crazy old bat? Honestly, Loretta, I'm about to jump out of my own skin. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Keep your voice down by. Oh, come on, let's grab a sandwich and a pop. You ready to march back into the lion's den? Look, with any luck, she's fallen asleep by now. With the luck we've been having, she'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, all ready to tell us more about goats that aren't goats and slimy monster trees. <sighs> Yippee. How close to schedule are we? Just got a message from Glen Falls. The police there are going to be searching the train. They're looking for two girls they think are aboard. Right. Oh, my God. Did you hear that? They know we're aboard. What are we going to do? Well? We have to get off the train now. What? But it's not stopping until Glen Falls, and the police will be there waiting for us. Oh, we could pull the emergency stop cord, but oh, now the cops would know right where to start their search. No, that won't work. Fi, we're going to have to jump off the train while it's still moving. Are you off your rocker? Jump off the train like a couple of hobos? Look, we have two choices. We either stay on here, in which case we're in jail by sunrise, or we jump the train and we take our chances. Now I really am going to be sick. And we're not just looking at jail time. We could get the chair. But... What about our bags? We should at least get those. We don't have time to waste. Besides, we got the loot with us. That's all that matters. Come on. Loretta! The train's going so fast! We'll get killed if we jump off! We're coming to a hill! The train will slow down going up. When we get to the top, jump! But... When you hit the ground, roll with it. You know, like Gene Autry does when he jumps off his horse. Okay. We're going uphill now. On the count of three. One. to Saratoga Springs? No. Along the tracks is the first place they'll search for us. And anyway, if the Glen Falls police are on the lookout, so are the ones in Saratoga Springs. Then what do we do? We head east till we hit a road. Then we hitch from there. Loretta, we don't even know where the nearest road is. We're in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of the night. And in heels to boot. Bet you don't care if my seams are straight now. Look, we're going to get out of this. But we have to be strong. 
Let's lose the heels. We'll make better time without them. And we should wrap that ankle with something. Is that better? Yeah, it does help. Thanks, Loretta. Sure thing. I guess that old broad spook does pretty good, huh? We're acting like a couple of ninnies. Come on, we can do this. Yeah, let's get moving. With any luck, we'll be hitching our way north in a couple hours. Yeah. But the way our luck's been going today, shh, don't jinx us. <sighs> Besides, we really need to get moving. Looks like some nasty fog's rolling in. Loretta, we're lost, aren't we? We're not lost. How can you say we're not lost? We can't even see the moon anymore. And I swear we've gone past this big rock before. Let's just take a rest and get our bearings. We have no idea where we are. Maybe we should wait for the fog to clear. We don't have time, Vi. The police could be on our tails right this very minute. Oh, uh, what if they have bloodhounds? No, we have to keep moving. The fog is bound to clear up soon. But what's the point if we're just going in circles, Loretta? And anyway, this place gives me the willies. Ah, uh, that crazy old bat still has you spooked. Okay, it gives me the willies too. Have you noticed how quiet it is? Yeah, not a bird, not an owl. Even the crickets have stopped chirping. And that smell! What is it? I don't know, but it's sickening, like decay, death. Hey, is it just me, or is that stench getting worse? Loretta, we should get moving. Fog. It's so queer. See how it writhes? It's like it's climbing right up that tree. <gasps> Wait, did you see that? See what? The tree. It moved. <laughs> sure, it did, Vi. <laughs> Next, you'll be telling me that it has pitch black tentacles and a gaping maw. But I could have sworn. Look, look. We're both exhausted, so it's not surprising that. Loretta, do you smell that? That stench is getting even stronger. And we're not moving. Which means it's coming towards us. That tree! It is moving! The old lady, that legend, it's true. Forget about that, Vi. Just run! Oh, look! There's another one! Come on, this way! Look out!
can double back. Hide behind those rocks. Oh, God. Oh, God. Keep going, please, God, please. Let them keep going. It's okay, miss. You're safe now. They're... they're coming! Let go of me! What in the world? Who's coming, miss? Oh, the trees! The trees! Let me go! Call the hospital. This one's a candidate for the booby hatch. You think this is one of the girls from the train? No, those were just kids run away from home, but this... Forest of the Dark Unbound by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions and recorded at Melrose Music in Hollywood, California. Tonight's radio drama was written especially for Suspense by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Catherine Kamei was by. Elizabeth Grayson was Loretta. Dana Perry Hayes was Dottie McIntyre. Damon Crawl was the station agent. Rocky Serta was the conductor. Eric Kelly was highway patrolman number one. And Johnny Francis Wolfe was highway patrolman number two. I'm your host, Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in suspense. free speech alive. That's why I donated my old car to KPFA Free Speech Radio. It wasn't smog, it wasn't even working, but still, it's worth much more than my previous donations. KPFA can also accept functioning motorcycles, boats if they're on a trailer, farm equipment, motorhomes, even recreational vehicles like jet skis. They even arrange free pickup and provide a tax donation receipt. So consider supporting KPFA Free Speech Radio by donating your vehicle. For more details, call the Center for Car Donations at 877-411-DONATE. That's 877-411-3662. Or visit kpfa.org. We can make a difference.
Good morning. Love KPFA. I'm listening to Upfront. Thank you for your wonderful show. I just love Tom Mussolini. The Blues by the Bay is my favorite show. And I love him and I just listen to him every Saturday. Brother K, it was the best music I've ever heard. That was the best reggae show. I, I got a total healing off that. That was great. Thank you for the hour special of Twitwit Radio. It's most enjoyable. But I just listened to education today, and it's just such a wonderful program. Packed so much in that half hour. Also, I put in Voices of the Middle East, which is one of my favorite programs. Thank you so much, and thank you for everybody's good work. I'm bound to thank you for it. Thanks for making KPFA your station. Please continue your support by making a donation at kpfa.org. And thank you for your support. We would certainly appreciate your volunteer time to help staff the phone bank during the drive. If you would like to volunteer on our phone bank, please call us at 510 848 6767 and dial extension 206. You'll get to meet other super KPFA fans like you and help out for a worthy cause this holiday season. Again, call 510-848-6767 extension 206 to volunteer at KPFA. Thanks for your help. Do you have too much baggage weighing you down? Wish you could take a load off? Well, you're in luck. The Center for Car Donations will pick up your old car, truck, or RV, whether it's running or not. And the best part is, your donation will help keep KPFA afloat. Speaking of afloat, we can also accept boats on a trailer, jet skis, and more. Call 877-411-3662 to see if your vehicle qualifies to be picked up for free in support of KPFA. Who wants to deal with the hassle of getting rid of trailers or old farm equipment? Visit kpfa.org or call 877-411-3662 to make your life and your station a little bit better. What's up, KPFA listeners? And I've been listening to KPFA for many years, but a lot this last year. You guys still got it going on. Chris Wells interviewing Sansara Taylor on International Women's Day was the best segment that you've had on. I really like your show, Tara Verde. I think it's very important to have local information, uh, what's going on in the Bay Area, especially for young people. And I would... Thank you to all of you listeners for calling in and letting us know how we are doing. Keep calling in and we will keep listening. You can continue leaving your comments on our comment line at 510-848-6767 extension 622. That's 510-848-6767 extension 622. Or reach us at kpfa.org. Thank you so much, and thank you for all your programming. Yes, for Real Revolution. This is Station to be at. That's why I keep my membership. Very interesting. Very good program. Appreciate you. Keep the good work up. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. Thank you. Bye. When we say this is listener-supported free speech radio, what are we really saying? The free speech radio part is about thought-provoking, challenging programming that uncovers stories you wouldn't normally hear on the radio. Listener-supported means it's your money that pays for those programs, the transmitters, the computers, the electricity, everything it takes to bring you this service. So here's a very large thank you to you, the listener, in listener-supported free speech radio. And if you haven't yet gone from listener to supporter, please do so now. Give online at kpfa.org. How do you listen to KPFA? 